Uh, welcome to the second webinar of our series, Grand Rounds in Breast Cancer, which addresses the improvement of quality of breast cancer care globally. The first webinar of this uh, series was on breast cancer surgery, and Pankai Roy from Oxford has pointed out that though the incidence of breast cancer in the high income countries of our world is higher than in the developing world, the majority of deaths from breast cancer happen in low and middle income countries because of the higher number of women living in these countries and because of the limited access to quality diagnosis and therapy. Timely diagnosis is the first step on the treatment pathway and we have therefore chosen advancing breast cancer diagnosis in the developing world as the title of our second webinar. We are looking forward to a presentation about the mammography screening project in Turkey, which is categorized by the World Bank as a higher middle income country. Professor Eric Aribal, radiologist from Istanbul, will present the results of this project, where he was involved together with Professor Wahid Ösmen, surgeon from Istanbul and president-elect of the International Sonologic Society. Professor Richard Rainsbury, breast surgeon from Winchester, UK, will comment on this study in the light of his experience in a breast disease project in Zimbabwe, which is one of the poorest countries of our world. I'm really looking forward together with you to these presentations and hope that they stimulate a lively discussion. Please announce yourself via the chat function so I can call upon you to pose questions and comments at the end of this talk. Thank you. Uh, Professor Aribal, I ask you to start with your presentation, please. Thank you very much. Um, and I would like to thank Professor Usman uh, because he was the main speaker for this event. But now he's traveling, he was not able to, and he asked me to make his presentation here. And uh, so I'll, I will talk on uh, what we have learned from a small uh, screening uh, project that we have uh, executed in between 2009 and 2019. Uh, for 10 years, uh, this was a biannual uh, cancer screening project in a very small country. But I want to give you some insights about uh, the breast cancer in Turkey. The, the incidence of breast cancer is uh, increasing by years, and you can just see the differences between 1993 and 2010. It, it, it's uh, twofold when compared uh, to 1993. So the, the, the changes in Turkey is the shifting to a westernizing lifestyle, the, the change of behavioral and reproductive uh, behaviors, and also increasing of the life, life expectancy and the uh, increasing of the opportunistic screening and breast cancer awareness because some of the cancers were not seen by the doctors in the old years. When we look at the breast cancer in Turkey, it's relatively at a, a later stage. Uh, the stage one is only 29% of the cases and 14.5% of the cases are stage three. And the age of uh, diagnosis younger when compared to the Western world, uh, the median age is 51, uh, which is 61 in the USA. And also uh, patients under 40 is 20%, which is 5% in the Western countries. And uh, we have less breast conserving surgeries. Uh, most of them are mastectomies because of the uh, extension of the tumor. Uh, only 40% of the cases are breast conserving surgery and the mortality rate is higher. Of course, uh, mom, we know the mammographic, uh, the uh, benefits of mammographic screening with decreasing mortality and uh, it's very important to detect the cancers in smaller. You can see two different bars here, uh, which is uh, between uh, 1973, uh, 75, 1979, and 2000, 2002. And you can see that the, the treatment has changed. So the mortality decreases by uh, the effect of both screening and the changes in treatment. But however, still, if the cancer is large, the mortality is higher. 
Uh, there are some risks with this mammograph screening, like recalls, overdiagnosis, and overtreatments. And uh, however, uh, the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging um, recommendations, when we look there at their recommendations, screening starting at age 40 is recommended. And also all women should have a risk assessment by age 30. And also uh, uh, they don't recommend to stop at 74 for screening because the life expectancy is getting higher and higher, uh, increasing. So we can continue on screening after 74. So our uh, screening uh, project was before, uh, before starting this project, we had a survey uh, 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 for the, uh, that was conducted on 1,000 women between the ages of 40 uh, to 69. The aims was uh, to measure the women's knowledge and, of breast cancer and mammogram and to invite them to mammographic screening and to raise awareness as well. So um, we asked them if they had prior mammograms in the last two years and almost half of the women had prior mammograms but only 34% had breast ultrasound in the last two years. Factors associated with uh, having a mammography in the last two years was uh, the age, the education level, and also gynecologic visits were important. The women who had gynecologic visits were more prone to have uh, mammographic screening. Uh, family history uh, also affects, uh, breast self-examination uh, also affects. So uh, how about the mammographic screening in Turkey? It's mostly opportunistic. We have a screening program which, which was started in 2016 for women between 40 and 69 year old. And uh, there are uh, cancer early detection centers all around uh, the country. Uh, they call the patients or the patients uh, the, or the women can go and just have free mammograms. Also, if uh, an ultrasound or an MRI screening is needed, it's uh, free, it's refunded as well. <clears throat> screening starts at age 40 and uh, cancer uh, control department made this decision according to the, uh, depending on the results of the uh, Bacchishir screening program that I'm going to give its results. This Bacchishir is a small county in Istanbul. Uh, it's, uh, the mammography screening project was a 10 year project for uh, which was organized for a biannual screening. Uh, and uh, it was population based. The aims was to show the possibility of an organized screening in Turkey and to find the screening age, if it's, uh, was, is it feasible between 40 or 50, or it should be after 50, and to evaluate the cost effectiveness of the different program. The targeted population was 40, uh, but was the patients with women, actually, healthy women between ages 40 and 69, and living in the area of Bacheshire, and we had uh, uh, 19,200 homes to be visited, and we enrolled every woman at this age. Uh, we in the team we had family practitioner, expert radiologist on breast imaging, two radiologists for a double reading. We had a public public health specialist, a mammographer, epidemiologist, nurse, and medical secretaries. It was a biannual a two way mammogram screening with MLO and CC views, uh, double read by independent breast radiologists. Ultrasound or uh, different mammography images were uh, also uh, obtained in uh, cases of recall. Uh, when we finished the fifth round, the compliance rate was quite good, it was 82.6%. And we also followed up follow the patients after breast cancer treatment. Um, the results uh, between uh, in this 10-year screening program, uh, the uh, number of screened women was 8,825. Number of breast cancers was 146, but these were not all detected by mammography. These were, were all the cancers that were seen in the county, which, was, uh, which included the screen detected ones and the interval cancers. 
the median age for DCIS was 47 and the invasive cancer was 49. The median tumor size was 15 millimeters, which in Turkey, the median size was 25 millimeters. So there's one centimeter difference between the screening program and the uh, regular uh, breast cancer registry in the country. And the pathological stages, uh, the DCIS was over 10%. Stage one was 47.9%, stage two, 25.3%, stage three, 12.4%, and stage four, 2.7%. Breast cons uh, conserving surgery uh, rate was 82.9%, which was 39% in the country. And the mastectomy rate was 17%. And uh, node negative cancers were almost 70%. Uh, axillary uh, lymph node dissection was 31.4%. The rate of screened women at age 40, 49 years uh, was 60.5%. The majority of the cases were younger than 50 years. And uh, the rate of the detected cancer at 40, 49 years uh, was 51.4%. Uh, half of the cancers were detected in this age group below 50. And 38.4% uh, 38 uh, 38 of the invasive breast cancers and 62.5% of the DCIS were premenopausal. So most of the DCIs were in premenopausal pre women. So we, you can see the comparison between the age groups of 40, 49 and 50, 69 here. And so um, the breast conserving surgery was higher in the older age group, uh, but it's uh, the other uh, findings are almost similar. And uh, I would like to mention that the HER2 positivity rate was 13% and the triple negative cancers were only seen in the cases uh, in the women below age 50, it was 6%. And here you can uh, see the comparison between the screening program and the uh, breast cancer registry of the country. Uh, it was uh, the can uh, cancer registry was 20,000 uh, cancers our uh, de detected cancers were 146 and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, 112 of these cancers were detected by mammography, 24 were internal cancers and 49 of these cancers were prevalent cancers and 63 were incident cancers in the following uh, screenings. Uh, they were detected in the following screenings. The median tumor size were, was smaller than the uh, country median, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and the breast cancer, uh, breast conserving surgery is quite high compared to the uh, registry, and DCIS is quite high, 11.724%. And the pathological states, when you look at the pathological states, you see a shift uh, to the uh, earlier stages. Uh, uh, where the stage one is 54% in the screening program, but 27% in the registry. And uh, node negativity is 68% compared to registry, it's 40%. So the cancer is detected by the screening program has earlier stages with uh, more cancers without axillary involvement. And when we compare the study findings with different uh, different guidelines, uh, they are, uh, the findings are quite uh, in line with the guidelines where uh, the node negative cancers were a little bit uh, lower. Uh, the node positivity was 32% when in some uh, countries it's uh, recommended to have below 25%. And, um, uh, but our minimally uh, breast cancer rate was 37%, which is recommended to be higher than 30%. So it's, it's uh, quite good. And also breast cancer detection rate was five per thousand, uh, where uh, 5.6 per thousand for the prevalent cancers and 4.5 per thousand for incident cancers.
to understand the uh, cost effectiveness of this program, the cost of screening for breast cancers was $852,000. And uh, that you see the diagnosis and treatment um, costs here uh, with uh, for the cancers that are not detected by screening and the, the, those are detected by screening and the uh, total costs here. And when we uh, uh, calculate the incremental cost effectiveness race, ratio, it is 1,724 um, dollars, US dollars per year, which is quite lower than the GDP of the country at that time. I don't know if it's the same now, but in 2011, it was 10,750 US dollars per uh, uh, capita. So it is uh, very low. And so it, uh, it seems to be uh, quite cost effective. And uh, when we look uh, at different age groups uh, and compare with the uh, all age groups uh, between 40 and 69, with the younger group, with the uh, ages between 40 and 49 years, uh, the, cost, um, the incremental cost of ratio is 1,354 US dollars per year. And uh, uh, the other group uh, between 50 and 69 years, uh, cost, the cost is 2,455 US dollars per year. Both numbers are still below the uh, GDP. So the conclusions are uh, first, uh, breast cancer incidence and mortality rates have been increasing in Turkey and other developing countries and breast cancer patients have an advanced stage at diagnosis due to a lack of awareness, nationwide organization, mammography screening programs and infrastructure. These are the main problems for uh, lower income countries. And according to our results, it shows that screen mammography is cost effective, feasible and implementable, and can be started at 40 years in Turkey. Uh, it is cost effective and increases the life, life expectancy and asymptomatic patients with breast cancer in Turkey. Risk based and personalized screening may be a solution to decrease the harms of screening mammography. We should wait for the results of the present and future clinical trials. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Arival, for this uh, in-depth uh, documentation of, the, uh, of your program in, uh, in Turkey. And it's interesting that you, you said that uh, a screening program is going on in uh, Turkey, uh, in the whole country. Yes, and it is, but it's Turkey. not very, sorry for interrupting, but I should mention that it's not very effective or they, are, they were able to reach only, uh, below, only around 50% of the women that has to be targeted. Okay. That's, uh, that's exactly my question, because I know Turkey is a very big country and the development in different parts of the country is diff different. Your project yes. was in, was in uh, Istanbul, yes. which is a higher income region, certainly, and exactly. more educated people, except especially in the region where the project has started. So I... Uh, and you only you had in the public page you showed that a high number of women had already had a mammogram before, but still you had such yes. a high uh, uh, detection rate, which is very good, and which of course supports to introduce screening in such a uh, uh, in such a uh, group of in in such a in such a country. Uh, which is uh, developing, but all at the upper end of the developing countries, I would say. Is there any questions on this uh, presentation or on the uh, on the Turkish? We have some time because you kept very well in time to discuss this directly before we start and go on, and maybe we discuss this later on together with the comments by uh, Richard Rainsbury. 
Uh, there is one question, actually. Do you want me to? I know that's a comment from Didier Verhoeven that uh, the, cancer, the Turkish Cancer Registry already had a high stage one and two without screening. So, uh, uh, because we have opportunistic screening, maybe that's the reason for that. But let me check the numbers actually. Um, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, I think that is the effect of the opportunistic screening that is being held by the uh, public hospitals and university hospitals before the national screening program. It's a little bit similar to the experience we had in our country. When we started, uh, uh, we started the screening project only in 2000, so it's rather late for uh, the level of the high income countries. And we also had had a lot of uh, opportunistic screening. And the question was whether we really could find many more cancers and could uh, improve the, uh, the or reduce the rate of uh, advanced cancers. And we could this also in Germany, and this is a little bit similar to the to the experience you have in your country. And I see there's a question by Helena. Helena, oh. people negative cancers. I think it's it's. She says it's very low. It's six percent actually, in the uh, screening project. Uh, well, we have followed every woman who entered the screening project, so it was the real number. It's, it's correct. Also, the, uh, the, uh, maybe uh, there's one comment by you because uh, of the age. You have many, you have, you found many patients in the young age group before 50, as many yes. as in the older age groups. This is a little bit, uh, I would not have suspected it Thank because. You so much. The rate, at least in Germany, is above 50, is more higher than below 50. Yes, because we are a younger uh, population. We ah. have a lot of young women. And when you, uh, when you make an ad age-adjusted uh, rating, uh, mm -hmm. then it's uh, close to the Western uh, rates. But okay. as the younger population is higher, so we have a lot of women between 40 and 60. 40 and 50 so that's why the numbers are high but it's when you make it an age adjustment it's quite the same okay and there's another uh, question by Didier Verhoeven with false positive mammography in the young breast is there a difference between the younger and the older breasts women older women with false positive mammograms the recall rate uh, it is 9.6%. Mm -hmm. Or oh, younger and uh, older, similar in younger? Uh, yeah, it's similar. Uh, yeah, the general is 9.6%, but it does not differ uh, between uh, age groups. Um, it's a bit high uh, when compared to Europe, particularly U Europe wants the uh, recall rate to be less than 5%, and in Netherlands it's less than 3%. Uh, but here, this was a very small study, uh, so the, 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 uh, it was a very small county with a very well-educated women, so the, uh, the radiologists were scared to uh, miss the lesions, so our recall weight was uh, quite higher than the uh, recommended uh, numbers by European as by the European guidelines. However, it was uh, less than 10%, which was required by BIRATS ACR. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. And I think uh, now I ask Dick, Dick to start his talk, his presentation uh, on his- uh, Sorry, uh, can I make a comment on the uh, previous question about triple negative cancers. I just look okay. I'm just yeah. looking at okay. the Turkish numbers. It is 11.8% in the cancer registry program. It's more than 10% triple negatives, but in our uh, study, it was 6%. Okay, so that's... It's less than the Turkish number. Yeah, well, we cannot, we mm. cannot explain it now. Mm. And... Maybe uh... we have uh, a small... Uh, 
cohort, it's uh, we had only 146 classes. So that's why situation. it was reduced. So yes. then I will call on uh, on Dick, on Richard Sains uh, Rainsbury to talk on his experience with the Zimbabwe problem and to comment on from a view of a really low income country. And then we can discuss at the end those together. And I hope you will stay here for the discussion. So <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for inviting me to take part in this webinar. And I've really enjoyed Professor Arable's presentation and congratulate him and Professor uh, Osman and their team for the uh, really outstanding results that they've achieved over the last 10 years. Uh, providing further evidence, as he mentioned, really for a national breast screening program comprehensively in Turkey. Just to point out straight away that I'm um, uh, not a radiologist, but a, I suppose you might call me a technical breast surgeon. And I've been very privileged to um, work in Turkey with my Sinatur colleagues over the last 15 years to develop new programs of training in breast surgery. And I've enjoyed the level of sophistication and specialization uh, that I've experienced there. So I'll leave my comments on and questions on Professor Arabel's presentation to others who are much better qualified than me to address them. So I've been asked to compare uh, the challenges we've encountered in Zimbabwe, which is uh, definitely a lower middle income country, uh, with the situation we've heard about in Turkey, which I think is classified as a higher middle income country. Um, and the next few minutes, I'm going to be summarizing um, a, uh, our experience of setting up the Matabili Land South Breast Cancer Project on behalf of the Association of Breast Surgery and our United Bulawayo Hospitals partners. Let's just start with uh, some facts and some data. This is the instance of female uh, cancers in Zimbabwe from the WHO in as of 2020. Draw your attention to the fact that the top two cancers are cervical and breast. Um, interestingly, this ratio is reversed in that breast cancer is more common than cervical cancer in the whole continent of Africa, but are higher in Zimbabwe. And this may just be ascertainment or detection bias because there's been a well-developed cervical screening program in the country now for almost 10 years. And I'd also like to draw your attention to this shocking figure at the bottom of the slide here, which is the instant mortality ratio for breast cancer in Africa, which is two to one, which means of course that um, about 50% of people who develop breast cancer will die from it in that, in that continent. Compare that with Western Europe and most of the rest of the Western world, where the mortality ratio is in excess of five to one. So this is a, a, a serious issue. Let's have a look at our operational environment. So this is Zimbabwe. It's a country slightly smaller than Spain with a population of around 17 million as of 2023 compared with Spain's population of 47 million. So it has a, a small and, and sparse population. It's bordered by Zambia on the north, uh, uh, by South Africa on the south and Mozambique uh, on the east, as well as Botswana on the west. Uh, believe it or not, um, there are no functioning linear accelerators in the country as of now. There has been one in uh, out of three functioning in Harare up until recently. There are two linear accelerators in um, Bulawayo, uh, both of which have been out of action for two years. If you look at the um, region of our project, which is Matabili Land South, shown here with Bulawayo, the main city, uh, it's a, a very uh, low density area with less than a million uh, uh, people living there. It has some of the lowest scores for human development, income and education out of the whole of the country and the highest scores for uh, families requiring emergency care and support. Believe it or not, 75% of the uh, population in Matt South can't afford a bus fare or uh, drugs, and a quarter of them live within uh, more than uh, 10 kilometers from the nearest clinic, which is a 20 kilometer round journey when you don't have anything to transport you apart from your feet. Uh, also, there's only one, currently one functioning mammogram machine in the whole province, including Bulawayo. So a completely different picture 
to what we've heard about in Turkey. Uh, like Turkey, there's increases both in life expectancy uh, and uh, in uh, age. And if you look at this data showing this almost linear increase in life expectancy from 47 years to a predicted 67 years in the 100 years from 1952 to 250. But we saw the massive impact of HIV AIDS in the late 80s and early 90s, leading to this really remarkable drop in life expectancy, which is really just about recovered now. This is uh, the linear increase in population we heard uh, about in Turkey, rising from nearly 3 million in the 1950s to a predicted 20 million. So a seven fold increase uh, in an 80 year time frame. And both of these factors are going to have an increasing impact on the demand for breast cancer detection and breast cancer care. There's very little data on the incidence of breast cancer in the country, but I have found this a study published from Harari showing the age specific incidence rates on a log scale uh, for five different time cohorts running from 25 years from 1990 to 2014. And what it shows, which is easier to see on this table, is the age standardized rate per 100,000 has increased from around about 21 to around about 45. So it's gone up at least twofold in the last 25 years, as nothing suggests that curve is dropping off. We heard about late presentation in Turkey, but I'd just like to point out that this is a completely different situation for that pertaining in uh, Zimbabwe and, and some other South, sub, sub Saharan African countries. This is the data from Professor Osman's paper showing that 80% of cases in their screening study presented with relatively early breast cancer, uh, compared with only 3.1% in this study from, uh, from um, uh, Harari, with the rest of the patients presenting with locally advanced or advanced breast cancer are, are unknown stage. So a very big difference between the two countries. And in Bulawayo and Matabili Land South, the situation is worse still, with survival rates uh, of uh, the lowest in sub-Saharan Africa, 22% versus 85% in uh, Namibia, three-year survival rates. So a very desperate situation in that country from the point of view of breast cancer. And this is one of the reasons we established the International Forum of the Association of Breast Surgery some uh, six years ago. And we decided as a group that the first priority was to start tackling the shocking breast cancer outcomes in this part of the world. We set up a partnership with the surgeons and other doctors in the United Bulawayo hospitals. Uh, and we agreed at, at the outset to two main aims. Firstly, to, to do a needs project to explore why uh, this part of the country had the worst outcomes in Africa. And secondly, to set about initiating specialist training so that we could accelerate uh, skills that would uh, hasten the diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer. The needs project was launched a year later with a small grant funding from THET and 50 health professionals with an interest in this field from all walks in life, mainly from the health service, who were key stakeholders who brainstormed over two days the key reasons for this. And we shortlisted the reasons down to about six, which informed the development of uh, both qualitative and quantitative questionnaires, which were used in a survey at the height of the um, first lockdown. This went ahead between June and July in 2020. It covered eight districts in Matabili Land South and in uh, Bulawayo City itself and involved 1,400 participants, of which just over 1,000 were women, members of the general public, and the rest were healthcare workers. And the bottom line was uh, of this survey is the there were major delays at every stage of the diagnostic pathway. First of all, women and their families delayed seek seeking advice, much as this, this was to do with lack of knowledge, lack of trust in Western medicine, and more trust in the faith healers, but above all, the pro prohibitively high cost for them of transport accommodation and treatment to reach uh, uh, the next stage of, of care. For health professionals, 
There was a delay in making referrals. Again, lack of basic knowledge. I'll show you a little bit of data on that, leading to lack of confidence. There's been no specific training in acquiring skills in breast cancer or breast disease management and a, and a fundamental lack of equipment and facilities to enable them to investigate these women at the local area. And thirdly, uh, delay investigations at the central hospitals, two main hospitals in Bulawayo, largely due to a major shortage of staff. There's been a mass exodus of trained staff to greener pastures in Europe and North America for a long time in Zimbabwe, accelerated more recently. And this has led to a lack of training and equipment. We heard about one mammogram machine in the whole province and uh, very much over-centralization of treatment of patients with hardly any communication with those referring the patients after the treatment has, uh, has been completed. This is just a snapshot of a paper that we is in submission to uh, PLOS One, looking at the basic knowledge about breast cancer, two groups, healthcare workers, the proportion are aware of the instance of breast cancer, five different, four different age groups. Overall, only half of them were aware of the instance and actually the most ignorant were the group, surprisingly between 30 and 39, significantly less. And looking at the general population, women and their partners knowing anything at all about breast lumps, only 25% admitted uh, to that. So armed with these findings, um, and also um, the Breast Health Government Initiatives Framework for establishing early detection in resource-limited settings, we agreed five steps to attempt to achieve earlier breast cancer detection in this setting. And I'll just go through them. First and foremost, um, motherhood and apple pie to prioritize education of all staff involved and subsequently of patients when we got the program up and running or the general public, so public awareness. Secondly, to deconstruct the current algorithm and come up with a, a network of decentralized accessible diagnostic clinics closer to the homes of the patients. Thirdly, to screen patients using uh, good old fashioned clinical breast examination and breast ultrasound, not mammography, uh, which would be inappropriate in the setting. Uh, next, to design software so that we can collect data and audit the outcomes for the purposes of quality assurance and then for presenting the results to the government to see whether we could expand this to other parts of the country. And lastly, and probably most importantly, is to engage the Ministry of Health, because without their support, it's highly unlikely that any of these steps will happen in any meaningful way. Back in 2019, before the pandemic, we held our first breast disease symposium, which was attended by 80 people. Half of them were nurses and half were clinicians, most of whom were surgeons, with faculty um, equally split between Zimbabwe and the United Kingdom. And the feedback on that in terms of uh, the participants was very favorable. And we were able to uh, show an increase in knowledge comparing uh, the test before and after the course. The following year, uh, two of our Bulawayo partner surgeons uh, were awarded fellowships in the United Kingdom on high volume breast units. Uh, one of those has just returned to lead the project on the ground in Zimbabwe and the other is shortly to join him. In the meantime, our two senior breast care specialists work with the University of East Anglia to develop an, an online course, bearing in mind this was the middle of the pandemic in breast care and five nurses and midwives were handpicked on the advice of the, of the nurse, wife and mid, uh, midwifery hierarchy to complete a free online course, which took three months to do so, which was completed last year in the summer. Three of these nurses have now been selected, two of them in the United Kingdom, uh, involved in observerships, and one will join later this year, working on high volume breast units to learn breast ultrasound firsthand before they return to lead each of the three clinics that have been selected in the pilot. Last year, a colleague and I in the autumn uh, went to uh, Bulawayo to run a practical online 
course, uh, sorry, a practical hands-on course to teach breast ultrasound and the clinical breast examination attended by some 16 doctors and nurses. And eight of those have gone on to an online advanced breast ultrasound course, again, uh, subsidized uh, by the University of East Anglia uh, uh, and uh, to gain more advanced skills. The second challenge has been to set up these decentralized uh, clinics which are accessible to the local population. So this is a cartoon of Matabili Land South. This is Bulawayo, this is Gwanda, the principal provincial uh, town, and this is Bite Bridge on the border with South Africa. Currently, a patient in a rural village, say here, goes to a rural clinic, they get referred to uh, Bite Bridge, uh, with a breast lump, they'll be referred on to uh, Gawanda, and then they'll be referred on to uh, uh, a UBH or Mapilo in uh, Bulawayo. And this patient pathway may take anything from four to six months, with sadly money changing hands at each stage. Many people give up when they're halfway through and return to the faith here in the clinic for further management of their disease. We have suggested a model which has been accepted by the Ministry of Health, where we have three pilot uh, uh, breast clinics in Bulawayo, Gowanda, and uh, Bite Bridge, um, where, which are staffed by uh, fully trained health workers in clinical breast examination, and breast ultrasound. So a patient from a rural location can be referred to one of these three clinics. They undergo investigation, and if they have negative findings, they are reassured and return to their place of habitation. If, on the other hand, there's concern, they're referred directly to the uh, main clinic at UBH where treatment, uh, further investigation and treatment is undertaken. And all of these clinics are based on now well-established cervical screening facilities, which were set up for the VIAC program some 10 years ago right across the country. The third step was to identify um, user-friendly, if I can put it that way, ultrasound probes which link directly to an iPhone. This is the butterfly probe, and this is the Clarius probe. And we did a cost-effective analysis on those two probes and came out in support of the Clarius probe, which, which um, costs about $4,000, links to an iPhone and produces uh, good quality images. Indeed, these are two images which were sent to me yesterday, over a period over a distance of 5,000 miles from the clinic running in Bulawayo of a bunch of breast cysts and one of three breast cancers which were picked up by that probe. And this allows instantaneous transfer to the iCloud and contemporaneous reporting by a skilled radiologist in, a, in anywhere in the world. So this is how the, pro, how the program is going to be set up. The fourth uh, step has been the development of a prototype database. One of the things that's happened in Zimbabwe over the last seven years is the development of a national electronic health record for every patient attending hospital, and that has now been implemented. The department were looking for a specialty module, and they heard about our project, and uh, we approached them as they approached us about developing a breast cancer module. So we worked with the National University of Science and Technology in Bulawayo to set up the prototype database. And very briefly, on the left, it details the functional user users, the clerk, the nurse clinician, their privileges, what they're allowed to do, and the data that they're allowed to collect uh, on the database. So the demographic details for the clerk or the nurse and for the clinician, the surgeon, uh, or our advanced nurse, the breast examination data, and so on and so forth. So that's work in progress and will underpin the audit uh, of the clinics as they develop. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we've been engaging with the Ministry of Health and Child Care and have engendered their support um, uh, for the last eight months. And we got to a point now where this memorandum of understanding has been signed by the president of our association. And we're waiting for the Ministry of Health to agree to fund three pilot clinics, the equipment, the furniture, and the internet. Above all, the internet is required because internet connections are absolutely dreadful in the country. Internet connections get dug up for, for the precious metals that they contain. And we will take responsibility for staff training 
training and data collection and uh, will provide online reporting where it's needed in the United Kingdom. We will have a radiologist have agreed to do that and we'll be auditing the outcomes and using the system to set up uh, a process of MDMs. So in conclusion, um, there's little doubt that both Zimbabwe and Turkey share combined challenges, uh, as in many countries, of extended life expectancy, rises in population, and rising rates in breast cancer. We both encounter advanced disease, but uh, early disease in Zimbabwe, as I've shown, is extremely rare. And I think the similarities between these countries end there. Zimbabwe is massively Im Im impoverished and uh, has a chronically underfunded health service. A doctor strike two years ago about that was funded by an NGO. There are no coherent plans, in fact, no plans at all to address the shocking outcomes of breast cancer because it's a non-communicable disease which had been right down the bottom of the agenda until recently. And mammographic screening is currently unachievable for the reasons I've explained and indeed inappropriate in this resource poor setting. But on the upside, it has, as we've discovered, a very receptive, motivated uh, workforce keen to be trained and to be educated. We've enjoyed the support, uh, particularly recently from the Ministry of Health. I haven't mentioned Kasexa, which is the College of Surgeons at East Central and Southern Africa. We stand assigned a memorandum of understanding with them to extend breast training to the 14 countries on the east side of the continent by integrating it into the general surgical curriculum. We've also had support from charities and others, including the National University of Science and Technology. But we really feel this happens now by chance to be in the right place at the right time because the uh, government is now focusing on non-communicable diseases and the implementation of electronic uh, patient records. And we are optimistic that this can be scaled up if the pilots show an improvement in uh, the use of these clinics and an uh, advance in the stage of the diagnosis to an established national network which already exists of more than 50 cervical cre uh, screening clinics that are dotted around the country. So I'd just like to thank these people uh, who've enabled us to get to this stage after five years since we started the project. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this presentation on this uh, project, which is quite different from what uh, the challenges have been in uh, in Turkey, I think. So also there are also challenges. And of course, there are some things have to be com are in common. And one thing is that we also saw in Germany that you have to get the politics behind you. Without politics, is it does not help you at all. You can make a project, but it will not have real impact if you don't get the politics behind you. Uh, is there any other comment? Is there a comment, Professor Aribal, you would like to say something? Then I would go uh, through the uh, questions from the audience. Yeah. Yes, I would like to. It's a very impressive uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And we have some uh, information about particularly Sub-Saharan uh, Africa that they have. Uh, also in some uh, Asian countries, they have this problem that uh, women do present with later stages like stage three, as you have shown, there were no uh, stage one cases in the in these countries. And uh, we had this uh, st uh, uh, study with uh, International Atomic Energy a a Agency, uh, which involved 14 countries of middle income and low income, and there were some Asian countries and some uh, African countries. Uh, uh, like uh, like uh, uh, Nigeria, uh, Zambia, and so uh, this was about the quality of mammography uh, machines, and, and we have seen that there are a lot of differences between countries about the infrastructure uh, for particularly for mammography. So it seems like, as you have shown, it seems like. Uh, very difficult to set a uh, mammography screening program in those countries. And it, it looks more logical to have a, a handheld, uh, I mean, um, a mobile probe, uh, ultrasound imaging with iPhones and um, 
and educating some midwives maybe or some nurses or some technicians, prevalent cancer detection program can be held in these countries. Uh, even the uh, even the in decreasing the stages uh, from three to two, two or three to one would uh, uh, make a big difference in those countries, I believe. Yeah, okay. Um, here, uh, there are some questions which uh, Helena asked us, Helena Earl asked, what percentage of the female population have a mobile phone? Well, and um, uh, Helena, I think the, 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 yeah, sorry, maybe you, you, <laughs> yes, Helena, that's an, 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 nice to hear from you. That's an interesting question. And actually, very surprisingly, uh, about 80 to 90 percent of the population have access to a mobile phone. It's one of the, one of the most precious things in the country. Now, how many of the women have access to it as well? Because men dominate the, society there. Uh, I couldn't answer that question, but there's certainly uh, optimism in the fact that um, communication via the mobile phone is very good, except for the fact that the actual phone network communication is dreadful. Um, uh, and this is a real issue. I mean, you can imagine that much of this development work we've done with the help of uh, Zoom, thank, thank goodness. Uh, and uh, each time, uh, at least 20% of the people who are in Zimbabwe uh, have poor connections and actually cannot take part in the whole of the, uh, uh, you know, of that session. Uh, but one of the things that we've asked the Ministry of Health is to make sure that they lay good connections to the clinics because without those connections, uh, that would be the weakest link. And, uh, nurses, as they begin to learn on the job, as you like, uh, if you like, will need to have instant feedback uh, from uh, from those experts that are viewing the images elsewhere. Some, I mean, we do have one radiologist in Bulwaya who's, who's agreed to do that. And there's a political issue here because clearly we want to involve the local specialists rather than take this work outside the country. But there is, a, I think, a prevalent time, if you like, when we set it up, when we will need to rely on people elsewhere. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's another question by Didier Verhoeven for, for Professor Aribal. Uh, what do you think that uh, there's a role for artificial intelligence in, uh, in uh, Turkey? Uh, so is there a, a really a shortage of radiologists? Is this a, a big problem there? Mm -hmm. that, as it is pro certainly in, 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 in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yes, when they have started the national screening program, they uh, the MOH wanted to make a central reading program, which was uh, installed in Ankara in the mi in middle of the country. Uh, so uh, it was a central reading, but they were uh, they had six or seven main breast radiologists, but they were uh, not able to find more breast radiologists. So they were having general radiologists reading the mammograms. So they had more than uh, 1.5 million uh, mammograms uh, in one year. And it's, it was very difficult to read. Uh, they were doing double readings. So most of them were read by general radiologists. And then we have, um, uh, we have uh, searched for the interval cancers in these 1.5 million mammograms. And we have found four, more than 400 interval cancers, and we had them read by uh, AI. And we have found that 50% of these uh, of these interval cancers were flagged by AI. So it shows clearly that we can implement AI as the second reader or a first reader as a, a triage, and then it will help us in. Uh, reducing the number of radiologists that are needed for uh, a screening program. I think so. I agree as a radiologist. I agree that in the future, AI will have some role. We don't know exactly how best, but it will have some role in the reading of mammograms, I'm sure. Uh, there's a question uh, to Dick Rainsbury uh, for, for South, regarding South Africa because of the high incidence of uh, advanced disease is there any palliative care well that's an interesting question yes 
there's certainly no palliative care service we've come across. Um, I think there may be some provided by the missionary hospitals, uh, which we haven't been in contact with yet, but they are an important source of healthcare in the country. Um, rather cynically, I think what happens is that the patients go back to the faith healer or witch doctor and uh, they purport to uh, provide free care for the patient, but as the as the disease progresses, they then use pills and potions which start costing money, uh, and the, and these poor people end up in the villages. I think dying, uh, dying with the advanced disease. But there's no there's no organization organization I know of, although they they may well be in maybe in the cities of Harare, but certainly not in Bulawayo. Can I Hans? Can I just answer another question that popped up just before then, which was do we consider using needle puncture? Uh -huh. and the answer to that is certainly yes. Um, and I think this is work in progress. Um, there was initially an idea that we should go straight to training the nurses and midwives in core biopsy, because of course, that may well then open the gates just to giving a, a, you know tablets of tamoxifen at, at, at two or three pence per, per day, or whatever it might be, uh, or, or even find needle aspiration uh, and cytology. But we felt that initially we shouldn't do that, that we should ensure that we uh, have got a cohort of experienced ultrasonographers, mostly going to be midwives and nurses who do most of the primary and even secondary care, they even do operations. And once we're happy that they're confident with that, then begin to train them uh, in, in one of these two techniques, probably starting with fine needle aspiration. Um, but for the time being, we backed off that and, and stuck to imaging and clinical examination. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we go come to the end. And uh, this was a very interesting session. Thank you very much, both of you, Professor Alibal and Professor Rainsbury for your information from very different points. Uh, what, and what we see, I think, what we see is that we have to regard very different aspects from the, uh, it's not only on the uh, money that you have, high income or low income, it's education of the personnel, of the experts, education of the people, of the women, which is very difficult in different countries. And of course, also the political, the, the interests of politics. You have to interest politics to improve this, to change really something. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you very much. And this was very, very thought provoking, I think. And uh, the next webinar will be on 16th of June on tailored oncology for all breast cancer patients with Sabine Sisling and Helen from England, from Helen Earl from England, and then also important in September, cost-benefit analysis of new cancer medicines, different choice of governments from uh, Nigeria, from someone from Nigeria, Lysik, Pian, and uh, from the UK, the Concord program on survival data, which is worldwide uh, survival data, very, in, very interesting and important in order to tailor programs in the different countries. And then we will, uh, disc we'll, we'll, I, I hope that uh, many of you and many more will have the chance to take part in this program. This part will be programmed, uh, will be uh, available on the eCancer website. We are also our last, our first uh, webinar is now available. Thank you very much for being with us and sharing, sharing your experiences with us. Thank <music> you.